For this Mass for the Morangelo family as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and, ever, and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, in regard to virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord, but I give my opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. So this is what I think is best because of the present distress, that it is a good thing for a person to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek a separation. Are you free of a wife? Then do not look for a wife. If you marry, however, you do not sin, nor does an unmarried woman sin if she marries. But such people will experience affliction in their earthly life, and I would like to spare you that. I tell you, brothers, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them. Those weeping is not weeping. Those rejoicing is not rejoicing. Those buying is not owning. Those using the world is not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Listen to me, daughter. See and bend your ear. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. Hear, O daughter, and see, turn your ear. Forget your people in your father's house. 
so shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord and you must worship him. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. All glorious is the king's daughter as she enters. Her raiment is threaded with spun gold. In embroidered apparel she is borne into the king. Behind her the virgins of her train are brought to you. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. They are borne in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king, the place of your fathers your son shall have. You shall make them princes through all the land. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. The Lord be with you. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Raising his eyes toward his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. But woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. The fairy tale of most teenage girls of uh, and that which is I, I, I idolized, which is that they'll be uh, married with uh, two and a half children living in a beautiful house with a white picket fence. Uh, most teenagers, maybe not just teenage girls, have those kinds of dreams that they will experience that in their lives. And then we read uh, St. Paul's letter today who says uh, to the Corinthians, um, I tell you, brothers and sisters, um, if you marry, you know, if you're free of a wife, then don't look for a wife. <laughs> if you're free of a wife, then don't look for a wife. Uh, in regard to virgins, I, I give my opinion as one, I have no commandment from the Lord, but I'm going to give you my opinion, stay single. <laughs> um, Sometimes parishioners will joke with me when I, I visit their houses, couples, and they'll say, Father, you know, I'll tell them I just came back from my retreat or I'm going to lead a pilgrimage to Germany later in the month of September. And they say, Father, I don't know what I did wrong. I think you chose that you did the right thing. You know, you're here I am. I'm, I've got work nine to five and I've got the kids to wa watch and, and, to, and here you are, I, I don't know, I did something wrong, you did something right. Well, it kind of leads back to this, <laughs> this, this passage from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. He's not saying that it's a bad thing to be married. He's not saying uh, that it's a, a better thing necessarily to be single. But what he is saying to those who are single, your lives are not distracted by the care for another the care for the distractions of, of the responsibilities of married life, the responsibilities of being a father, the responsibilities of being a mother, that you as a single person can now dedicate your life wholeheartedly to God. 
and it's a little easier that way, and, and it is. I mean, I, I recognize that. I always do recognize that, especially after uh, big holidays, Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter, when I'm with my family and my nieces and nephews, and who's crying over a game, and whose in-law is angry at the other, and whose wife is ma angry at the husband, or my brother angry at his wife, or my, my sister angry at her husband, or my father upset at something, and the children are crying, and, and uh, it's not always that bad necessarily, but you know, there's drama that comes with it. And then I say to my family, God bless you all, love you all, I'm going back to my quiet rectory where I can just sit in peace. <laughs> That's a, that I recognize is a, a blessing in, in some regard, certainly that you can then retreat back to a quiet home where I live a stone's throw from the Blessed Sacrament. In fact, even in our rectory, we have a beautiful chapel that Bishop DiMarzio has installed in the rectory so that we have the Eucharist right there, right by our side. Is it, is it, is it bad to be married? No. If you're married, do not seek a separation. If you marry, however, make sure that you can keep your focus also on Christ, to not be distracted by only the responsibilities of married life, to not be distracted of the responsibilities only of your fatherhood or your motherhood, but to also seek Christ in the midst of that. That's a common theme that we hear in the Gospels. We heard it again, you know, these past Sundays in the Gospels to put Christ before all things. Because that's what really matters. That's what the gospel is saying. It's not, it's not the, 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 the tangible that matters. That which we think is important is not really that important. What is most important is our relationship with Christ. Blessed are you who are poor. Happy are you who are poor. Well, the rest of the world would say happy are the rich. The rest of our teenagers and our young generation would say, I want to be rich. I want to have the money. I want to have the wealth. I want to have a, an overabundance of food. I, I never want to experience sorrow or weep. That's my goal. Well, it, it, our, our faith tells us, don't take that which seems to be so tangible and so, quote, important to the rest of the world as the most important. What matters most is our faith in Christ. And from that, all good things flow. And so today we, we pray in, in a special way that we may have the strength and the courage, the ability to always seek Christ out at every moment of our days. That yes, it may be a little bit easier for, for me as a single man to be able to seek Christ since I don't have the responsibilities of having to dress a child, get ready for school, to work on their homework when they get home, to make sure that they're fed, to make sure that my wife is provided for, to make sure that the house, the leaks in the house, that the roof is not collapsing and that the toilet is flushing and all of the responsibilities of, of married life. Yes, it's a little certainly easier to be able to devote myself more fully to Christ. But for all of us, it's our common goal to do the same. You know, it, it is our theology that married men and women lead each other to sainthood, that, that a married man help lead his wife to sainthood, that a married woman help lead her husband to sainthood, because at the center of it all should always be Christ. And that is the theme of our readings today, to keep Christ as the center of it all that what seems to matter in the eyes of the world and in the, in the eyes of the secular world does not really matter much at all in our faith. Blessed are those who are poor, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are those who are hungry, for they will be fed. Blessed are those who weep and mourn, for they will experience the joys of eternal life. That's what matters most. So let that be our prayer today. We stand now and offer our intentions to our Heavenly Father, we pray for all religious men and women. May the Lord continue to encourage them in faithful service. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who suffer with chronic illness. May Christ, the healer, bring them physical and spiritual healing. We pray to the Lord. 
We pray for students and teachers in our, our, our diocese. May God enlighten their minds and empower cooperation for a fruitful school year. We pray to the Lord. We pray, I pray in a special way today for my father celebrating his birthday, that he may be continued to be blessed with good health and many more years of faithful service to God and to his wife and to his children. We pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, may God turn their tears to laughter as they rejoice with all the saints and angels. We pray to the Lord. And finally, for the Morangelo family, for whom I offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers which we bring before you and answer them if they be in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Abbot, indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
A similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Mortem Tuam, Annunciamus Domine, et Tuam Resurrectionem Confitemur, Donec Venias. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As I mentioned in the prayers of the faithful, today my, is my father's birthday, 81 years old, and uh, I texted him yesterday to see where I could take him out for lunch. So he responded this morning. He said, how about White Castle? I don't think I've seen my father eat White Castle in 20 years, so dad, I'll splurge. How about Wendy's? We'll splurge, okay? Um, but I'm looking forward to spending a little bit of time with him on his birthday today, and our prayers for you, dad, today. And always. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Together we pray. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. A blessed day to you all. Sound healed, restored forever. 
litany of St. Joseph. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector. You who live and reign forever and ever, amen. An act of consecration to St. Joseph by St. Alphonsus Liguri. O holy patriarch, I rejoice with you at the exalted dignity by which you were deemed worthy to act as father to Jesus, to give him orders and to be obeyed by him whom heaven and earth obey. O great saint, 
as you were served by God, I too wish to be taken into your service. I choose you, after Mary, to be my chief advocate and protector. I promise to honor you every day by some special act of devotion and by placing myself under your daily protection. By that sweet company which Jesus and Mary gave you in your lifetime, protect me all through life so that I may never separate myself from my God by losing his grace. My dear St. Joseph, pray to Jesus for me. Certainly, he can never refuse you anything as he obeyed all your orders while on earth. Tell him to detach me from all creatures and from myself, to inflame me with his holy love and then to do with me what he pleases. By that assistance, which Jesus and Mary gave you at death, I beg of you to protect me in a special way at the hour of my death, so that dying, assisted by you in the company of Jesus and Mary, I may go to thank you in paradise and in your company to praise my God for all eternity. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.